Hi, and welcome back to my Rug Cook and Talk show. Okay, so if you're just tuning in, my name is Annette, and I do a little talk show for those of us who are rug hookers that are solo, and probably prefer to be solo, or maybe you just happen to not have a group. Anyway, you can have a little group in the privacy of your own home. I know it makes no sense at all, but this is what we do, a cyber group, and um, I share. That's it. I share as we hook, and I get a good warm cup of tea to start the morning. I'm in the New England area, for those of you who might just be catching this show. And I did want to share that I started a blog so we could kind of see, as a group, the things that I'm doing on the show. I have some of my favorite things that I kind of share with you during the, the show, the course of the show, and I'm also putting pictures up of the rug as it progresses and my new felt rug and I did bind it so I'll just give you a quick show let me see if I can get it over here I took it off the frame I'm re-gluing the rubber strips around my old trusty frame there because they do come off over time so I'm just going to re-glue them but just so I could show you Here's the felt rug. I'm going to be working on that after this rug is completed, and I just have to. I have to do what I have to work on, just some fun colors, no plan involved. And um, so there's the twill tape on there. As you can see, it's stitched on um, the wrong side to the right side of the foundation. So when it's done, this will all be trimmed away. Um, for those of you who don't know or you're starting a first rug, I'll just give you a quick little uh, breakdown here. This gets cut away to about probably a half inch. And then it's just, and then I do, um, I do zigzag it again. I don't know why, just to really be sure it doesn't unravel that little edge that I cut. And then this is folded. I mean, you could fold this as, as halfway. I like a little halfway around probably about... I'm going to say three quarters of an inch all around I like to put as a little border. Um, and sometimes that changes up too. When you finish your rug, you look at it and you say, wow, I don't think there should be any border. So then just fold that twill tape all the way under. And there you go. So let me just get that put back. Okay. It's waiting for me. And I hope you all had a wonderful new year. And uh, I was able to get to my Goodwill store. Oh, quick sip. Oh, that was the first sip. Very good. So I did get to my Goodwill store. I'm going to just uh, bring that around a little bit. Okay, so I could share with you what I got. And let's see. It The total was six skirts at $2.50. These are not washed. I usually, like I said, don't handle them. For the sake of the show, I'm going to do that. Um, so I got this. huge skirt okay and it is a it's a really nice plaid okay so um, basically it has two seams and that's what I like I actually passed up a plaid skirt I know most of you would probably be like what are you kidding me because you don't get a lot of wool in your stores but I did pass up a a skirt you know what the weave was a little iffy for me it looked a little like even if I tried to tighten it up in and felt it up in the wash and the dryer it still might be a little loose so I, I you know what I passed on it it had like 10 pleats of, of gores panels so to speak and that would just be so much of those panel-y things cutting the seams and I, I just didn't want to deal with that so anyway uh, a block this is your perfect uh, again this is the this is the hooking material that most rug hookers prefer to hug, hook with. It's a, a medium flannel wool, and it uh, has a nice tight weave. And so, again, two, two seams on that, and, um, well, maybe three on that one. I don't know. And a gray, same fabric, that gray flannel. But, again, you want to try to get the biggest. And I know most of you are probably saying, we'll take whatever we can get. And, yes, I, I often do that, too. I don't really look too much but I try to get the biggest size as I could. Um, and I just found out that they have a separate, the plus size has a separate section at GW. And so you might want to just shoot over there because they have a separate section for even their skirts and their dresses. So 
I have seen some really, I've gotten some good stuff over there. And so here's the light blue. I very rarely come up with a light blue. And so that I think is really pretty. And it's quite big and plated and I'm excited because I have no light blue uh, wool. I just don't come across it. I'm, you know, obviously I don't see many, light blue is not a great big wool color. So um, I got this pretty, um, it's short, but I loved it and it's a wrap. So it gives me a lot of, um, yeah, let me unbutton it for you. I don't normally like to handle this stuff without washing it, but okay. From the Gap, and this is 70% wool with a little nylon in it, and I'm okay with that. And so this is great because it's got no, it was 250 So you know what? If I got maybe, I don't know, a half a yard of fabric here, three quarters of a yard, two thirds, something like that, I am happy. And it's very pretty, and it's this nice brown color and I love that color uh, it goes well with my house upstairs so when I'm hooking up for upstairs it always fits and this was this was the big find uh, for me was this beautiful flannel skirt and I'm gonna try to sit and roll back here so you could see how big it is is that all on camera this is one big skirt with lots of fabric and um, three seams and some pockets in the front and I'll just cut that right off okay so um, that's it those are my skirts I've got I'm sure at least two yards of fabric in there assorted for six times about fifteen dollars so I am all good with my little find at the GW so let me just get this to the side and a few of you want to know how to kind of deconstruct you know, it's pretty simple. Um, I'm gonna bring uh, bring the camera. Let's see, maybe I can do it right over here. Can you see me? You could. Okay, not so great, but let's see. I'm trying to work. Okay. So for the sake of the show, I'm gonna ha go ahead and just um, bring this over here and show you. This is a gray flannel uh, pinstripe, and um, it's been washed, and so, um, let me see. Here we go. I just go ahead and cut off the whole, very close to the edge of it, I cut off the band, the waistband. I go right over the zipper. So long as that little zipper head isn't in the way, you should be able to go over it. I'm sure it's not great for my scissors, but you know, for $3, I get a new pair at Joann's a couple of times a year. and. It's all good. So, I actually have sharpened these on my knife sharpener upstairs, and they're fine. So, there you save a couple more bucks if you get a little knife sharpener for your kitchen, and you can resharpen your your scissors, and you will not be paying for that. And this one has a lining, so I just go ahead and cut around. Um, I don't get crazy to save every scrap and every piece of wool on here. I just don't. I don't have time for that. I don't want to spend time doing it. If that's your thing, go for it. Um, if you have a lot of time on your hands and want to um, spend it cutting away and sa savoring every piece of wool, that is absolutely fine. I have not yet found a use for these waistbands. So, you know what? I really don't want to save everything. I'm limited with space and it will go into the garbage. But hey, I like to think that I removed a lot of the landfill by buying these skirts. So, I don't really feel sad. Okay, and usually these little bottom pieces are just tacked in. Okay, and this one is not. So, sometimes you can rip to a spot where you can just cut it away. There you go, another little tacking. And that's it, um, that's it. Then I will usually just remove these, uh, the hem, I rip the hem out so it's unfolded, and, and then I just go ahead and uh, remove these uh, seams. And they're quite easy. If you can get in between the middle, see if you could see there's a little, there's like a little thread opening, you can get in there and There you go. I just poke a hole with the scissor. 
like I said, I'm not like a crazy fanatic. Like, oh my God, I've got to save every piece of this wall. And there are times where I've really just been like at the end of number skirt number five that I will just cut that seam right off. So there you go. Uh, like I said before, I, I try to keep every aspect of rug hooking to be enjoyable. And when it's not enjoyable, I stay away from that part of it. And so me trying to open up every seam on this skirt, well, that's never going to happen. And that's just me. Oh, maybe, you know what, maybe it's because I do have a lot of um, options to find a lot of wool. And for those of you who don't, you know, then yes, go ahead and savor every little morsel of your wool because then it is very um, valuable to you. And um, I understand that and it would be worth every minute that you spend doing it. So uh, that being said, okay, so that's it. The, the hem opens up quite easily and you have got a perfect piece of fabric. And because I use a rotary cutter, I just sometimes leave these whole and I just will cut as I'm kneading the fabric. Um, yeah, and that's it. I open up the darts and they open up quite easily too. You can see here. Those are the darts and the pleats and they I pop those open before I cut. I cut away at the pockets and we're good to go. So that's it. Just wanted to give you a quick uh, tutorial. Somebody asked about um, how do you cut these and deconstruct them and that's it. And this all goes into the garbage. Okay, so back I go. I'm going to show you quickly. Um, well, you know what? I'm hooking on this and it's almost I'm almost ready to switch it up. So let me bring you back here if we could see. I'm gonna try to open it up while it's on the frame and uh, let me push my light out of the way so you can kind of see where it's at. Okay, can this work? Maybe, alrighty. Okay, so there you go. The other day it was cold and I was actually quite grateful that most of this was completed because it kept me a little warm while I hooked. There's a little window here with a draft. So you could see how much has been completed. Let me try to just, there, bend it up a little for you. Oh, it's not really working, but you could see. So I've got two corners up here totally completed. We're all the way down, and that's all that's left to do. So there you go. Okay, I will try to post some more pics. Um, there's a blog called uh, Let's Hook dot WordPress dot com, and it's my blog, and um, it's just a place where I can put pics of the things that I'm doing here, because sometimes to look at something while it's moving gets a little difficult, and so it's easier to see a still shot of the rug to maybe study something, or you want to get some information off of something, so. Um, and refer back to it and my blog will uh, provide that opportunity for you to do that so The nature of the blog is that you're going to see the most recent blog post up there for the day um, trying to do one every day From the show so uh, you know if there was something on the show that you need to reference it would be there for you um, But that's not always happening and there's not a show every day So uh, as I kind of think of things I will throw it up so you can uh, go back and check it out. And the most recent post will be the one you'll see. If you scroll down, then you'll see each and every um, post from the beginning, which is only a few days. So uh, go ahead and um, check it out and you might see something there that you forgot that you are looking at. I'm trying to post also pictures of the progress of the rugs um, that we're working on. So that being said, uh, go ahead and grab your coffee, your tea, uh, if you're hooking in the tropics, go ahead and grab something cool and tall and frosty. And wow, that sounds really good. Wish I was in one of those spaces. So anyway, go ahead and grab it and grab a hook and let's start hooking. Uh, new year and new rugs. Mm. And um, that's what it's all about, is trying some new things and learning um, 
who we are through our rug hooking and just enjoying the rug hooking um, the process I love it I really do love it and I I hope that uh, the the new followers that are coming on to the show are inspired to just pick up a simple hook do not get overwhelmed go to the store and buy some burlap and uh, find you know grandpa's old pants <laughs> not the ones he's wearing and uh, you know the point is just grab some fabric doesn't even have to be wool if you just want to try rug hooking to see if you like the actual process of it cut up an old t-shirt cut up anything any old square of fabric will do with a pair of scissors okay there you go get an embroidery hoop they're very inexpensive and you can start rug hooking right now so do not think you need a lot of money you need all these fancy things uh, these are tools that I've gathered through the years that have enabled me to hook you know in a, in a different way that I was you know we do evolve and find new tools to use and so go for it but the motion more hooks um, that I love uh, the primitive is eight dollars okay so for eight dollars you can start hooking with you you'll need a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter if you're already a quilter and they're 10 bucks 12 bucks maybe a cutting mat and if you don't even want to get that much scissors that's all you need scissors burlap at four dollars a yard at Joann's or Michael's or wherever you can find it and an embroidery hoop you're good to go so maybe for like 25 bucks you're starting to rug hook or even less so um, there you go like I said you don't need wool to start rug hooking try it on a very inexpensive throwaway item that is no loss and it's cheap and guess what you might hook up something beautiful with what is around your house and what is available to you and you know what there's a lot of people who are like I'm not into the heirloom thing and I just want to make a rug and you know I just want to hook a rug and if it lasts two or three years fine and so you know what that's that's a great mentality to just enjoy um, making something and keeping your hands busy and being creative you know why not why not so that's my uh, that's my advice to you if you want to start and you, you're, you're just kind of watching this show and you're like hmm rug hooking it seems like a lot she's got a frame and a, and you know all this uh, wool and st you don't need all that you don't um, and that was the beauty of it like I said in my previous ones uh, shows that's the beauty of rug hooking is that it, it came to um, it came to the mind of women needing something to cover their floors with and the drafts and the bareness and the holes in the floor to it evolved to um, this beautiful art form but I prefer not to forget where it came from and that's just me that's what I'm comfortable with and you've got to do what you're comfortable with if you want to take it to whatever level go for it because we all learn from what people step out of the box and do we all can admire it uh, even if we don't pursue it and it all adds uh, a bit of something wonderful and pretty and beautiful to to uh, the trade the craft and the world so it's all good I love it all and you can hook anything you can hook plastic bags I've seen so uh, and I'm sure those plastic bags are quite dirt resistant <laughs> I don't know what would land on those those will be in the landfill for supposedly a hundred years so you know what hook away hook away with whatever you want and um, yeah I've seen that I've seen them put all kinds of pretty colored bags into I mean it was just to make a statement I don't think the the rug itself was meant to be uh, walked on it was more like an art expression of to to use up what we have and put it to good use and it was very pretty and this person had used many different kind of bags metallic ones and uh, clear and white and red and they were just cast off plastic bags that you would use for food shopping or you go to a store and they pack your bag your your purchase in something and that's basically what it was and it was quite amazing and she had a cute little design on it and she had some flowers but it was all done 
with what she wanted to use what was around her and I admire that and that shows us a fortitude to go ahead and try uh, to just hook with what we have and you can have a great enjoyable craft for very little money it does not you do not need to spend a lot of money uh, going into rug hooking um, but yes if you're a person who likes options then you would want to gather a lot of wool then that is what you want to do and that is your your view of rug cooking, you go for it. If it's something that fits with your lifestyle, absolutely. It's all good. It's all good. And that is the beauty of rug cooking, is that there's nothing wrong in rug cooking. Nothing. Don't let anybody tell you you shouldn't be using that or you shouldn't try it. You try it, and if you like it, then you use it. And if you don't care about, um, you know, hearing negative thoughts, then just use what you want to use, because to me it's all good. It's all what you want for your rugs, or your works of art. If that's what you so choose to create, then absolutely. So, I mentioned her before, and her name is Gloria Krause. Um, she has since deceased, I've heard, but she had a really nice DVD. Actually, it wasn't a DVD. It was a VHS. She, there was no DVDs back then when I saw that she, she was just breaking into rug hooking for me, that on my scene, so to speak. Um, she was a pioneer in making these huge um, kind of art rugs, but also rugs for the floor. Um, and she had them hanging in, you know, corporations and collections. But so just Google the name Gloria Krause, C R O U S E. And you will see, uh, she has a book that uh, is quite inexpensive. I mean, I think for a couple of dollars, maybe even a penny at some point I saw it, and plus shipping for $3.99 on Amazon, and you can have her book. Just gives you an idea of what you could use. She, she did her rug cooking not this way. She did it with an electric, uh, uh, like a punch needle. But, you know, it's, it's, it's all, it all comes down to rug cooking, so it's all good. Uh, and this rug is really, I'm very, pl I'm very pleased with this rug. So I can't wait. Like I said, yarn is very squishy. has a different texture than fabric strips, and there's both in here. And I, I, I love it. I very rarely hook anymore without throwing some bit of mixture of yarn or fabric together because I really love uh, the look of it and uh, if you try I love the wool strips for outlining I've said that before and I can't um, reiterate it again that it's just uh, to make that point home is try if, if you get a chance to try a, a, your next rug and you want to outline something outline it with the strips and fill in maybe just the leaves with the yarn or or some other detail but it's or the flowers with the yarn and outline with the wool fabric and it just it just is really pretty and what I like about the fabric just it, it gives a very straight sharp line to the outlining whereas I don't find the yarn does do that so that's just me but if you could just outline something you'll see the sharpness of it is, is beautiful it gives a very good detail uh, look to it so we're, we're coming to the end of this rug, and I'm excited to move on to the next one. And I will keep posting to the blog any new stuff that I can think of. And uh, for 2015, since it's here, I will tell you I will not be buying anything new. I'm going to make do and uh, make my rugs. I have plenty. So you know what, it, I don't want to make it sound like I have three pieces of wool and I'm making do. But if I did have three pieces of wool and I came to that conclusion, I will make rugs with those three pieces of wool. My point is, is I, I just want to not keep buying. I want to start really uh, getting into being in, a creative more with, with what I have and making do with that. And I don't even know if I'm going to be dying or not this year. Something I like to do, but I don't have too much wool to over dye so I might just be sticking to the make do and do with what I have and enjoy that process of it so that's just me if you have some sort of new uh, uh, way to approach rug hooking drop a comment drop a line I'm a member on rughookingdaily.ning I now have the, the blog you can leave me a comment there 
Again, that blog is Let's Hook, L-E-T-S-H-O-O-K, dot WordPress dot com, and uh, visit me there. Sign up, subscribe, leave a comment here, like the video here, and uh, tells me whether I should continue doing them or not, and keeping us going at this point. So thank you for joining me. I want to wish you all the best with your hooking for the new year and uh, continue to just forge ahead and don't be afraid to try new things and just try it. You're in the privacy of your own home. The worst that could happen is, wait, you reverse hook and pull it out. It's not a big deal. Try some new color combinations. Just throw some different color strips near each other on some burlap and hook purple with pink and green and red and yellow and just see what happens. Make squares, make circles. It makes no difference. Just give it a try. You will have so much fun. It's like coloring with wool. It's all good. So uh, until we meet again, stay well and happy hooking.